it's a life worth living. It's a life uh, well lived. That's everything. When you come to that part of your life, when it's over, it, and then that feeling of it's been good. I've done what I want to do. I've been where I want to go. I've helped what I want to help. I've lived for what I need. That is the biggest joy of this thing called life. And if it's a child that you've had and you've given you love and you've enjoyed that, well, power to you. We're not against that. We're against defining us as less barren, um, unloving, hedonistic, um, selfish, godless. Bleh. <laughs> Hey lovelies, welcome to We Are Child Free, a podcast about child-free women and the lives we lead. I'm your host, Zoe, and each episode, I'll be speaking with another incredible woman about her decision not to have children and what it's meant for her life. The voice which opened the show belongs to a living legend, Marsha Drutt Davis. In 1974, Marsha appeared on the TV news show 60 Minutes, explaining to her in-laws and the American public watching that she decided not to have children. The backlash was horrific. She lost her job as a teacher, received death threats, and faced judgment from pronatalists. For 46 years, Marsha has been fighting to show the world and child-free people that we are valuable, that our choices are valid, and that we can be as loving and nurturing as any mother. At 78, she looks back on a life well lived and doesn't regret a minute of it. It was an absolute honor to spend some time with the true child-free icon who blazed the trail for the rest of us. Meet Marsha Drutt Davis. I am not the first. She's the first. It's Ellen Peck. This book set me free. Just the way I hope my book set other people. Yes. This woman who we lost in her 50s, you know, to cancer, she started this. And I became friendly with her and then learned from her and then reached out. But this is the beginning. Okay, I'm going to check that out. I'm going to have to read that book. I mean, this is, you know, this is what we need. We need more more women sharing their stories. And, you know, when you see that someone else is going through this, it helps you process your feelings so much more, you know. And when I discovered there were there were child-free women out there, it just helped me realize that I'm not alone. And yeah, we, we need more more of our stories out in the world. And people like myself who are now old, oh God. Um, <laughs> we can look, I can't stand that. I can't stand it. But we can look back. <laughs> And we can say, I've made no mistakes. I have loved this lifestyle. I continue to love this lifestyle. Yeah, you know, it's, yeah. Um, the, the older ones can help the younger ones. The first thing that I, I wanted to ask you really was, you know, when, when did you decide that you didn't want children? You know, was it something that you've always known about? Did it come to you later? Tell me about how you came to this decision. It's it's pretty funny. I think the very first time was when my mommy explained to me where babies come from. And when she told me <laughs> that they came out of a vagina and that the vagina gets bigger and bigger and bigger and then the baby is pushed out, I was like, what? <laughs> and she, oh, but it, it's worth it. You know, it's it's so worth it. I think that was the beginning of my questioning. That was the beginning. But I was a kid, you know. It didn't really hit me until I was married the first time. Okay. And then um, neither of us had ever said a word about, you know, kids. It was expected that I would have children. And, and I even write in my book, there was a pregnancy scare where I thought I was pregnant. And my husband was, was like a proud peacock. We're going to have a baby. Yay! And I was like, huh. And so I found out that I, <laughs> thank goodness, wasn't pregnant. Um, but then that marriage was so short-lived, it, it wasn't an issue, you know, because then I was divorced so fast from him. I read the first book and I read about, you know, that that um, history with him. And yeah, it, I mean, it, it sounds scary to me, you know, like the pressure that women were under back then to just not even think about if they had they a decision. It was just something. Yeah, true. True. But. But the second marriage with 
with Warren, my second marriage, um, mm-hmm. we never talked about it, never said a word. Right. I was a little older and we had money problems and we kept making excuses. And then I read The Baby Trap. When I read this book, I just handed it to him. I said, we need to talk. And both of us were like, we don't want to have children. But he had written me a song. He played the guitar and he had written me a song picturing me on the back porch with a baby in my arms. And it was a beautiful, you know, folky kind of song singing to me on his guitar. And I said, I guess that song has to be thrown out now. (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) But we were not yet out. I never. I mean, it's the same as anybody who is in a closet. Yeah. We had not come out and said, "This is our choice. We're happy with it. Be happy for us." Yeah. And it wasn't until sixty minutes, when I was asked to be on sixty minutes, that uh, the shit hit the fan. <laughs> yeah, it kicked off. So, th- so that was the first time that you had actually openly said that you wanted to live child free. Is that right? Um. Yes, it was on, in 1974. I was on 60 Minutes, and Warren and I were interviewed for the first time, telling his parents we were not going to have children. And it was a two-hour ordeal that was uh, edited to 20 minutes, making me look like a bitch. And you can visually see me, which is on, um, I believe it's to kid or not to kid. Part of it is on there. I have the whole thing that I show on my cruises, but you can see me looking like I'm the one that's talking and Warren is just going like this and like this. Mm. Not one word in 20 minutes. Mm. You can hear him say one little thing to his father and that's it. So I'm the bitch. Wow. It's me. Oh, Manip, I didn't know what pronatalism was. I didn't know what editing was. I didn't know anything until that show. And then when Mike Wallace ended that show with his famous last line, pardon our perversion for airing this on Mother's Day. Good night, everyone. I was a perverse oh. person. I was a perverse teacher. Mm. I had death threats. I lost my job for 15 years as a teacher. I mean, I can't Gosh. make this up. No, no, it's shocking. It's shocking. It, you talk about, you talk about what? <laughs> it was like, what? And it took me a long time to get over that because you don't know what it's like to get a death threat. You don't know what it's like to have your dog. Uh, Somebody said, watch your dog. I'd be careful with your dog. You don't deserve to have a dog to to care for. I mean, I lived in terror. And then I began to talk. And then I was, I had to be taken, of course, picketing lines of women, godless bitch, godless bitch. And the police had to take me across because I spoke at uh, high school seniors uh, telling them they had a choice because the pregnancy rate on Long Island was outrageous. And there was, I never say, don't be a parent. Never. No. If you want to be a parent and you want that job, wow, what a job. I don't want it. That's all. Go for it. Be a good parent, you know? But, um, I mean, the back, the backlash is crazy. Ridiculous. It's um, uh, seeing what you went through. I, I'm not surprised it took a, a, a while to to get over that. I mean, losing your job that you loved and were really, really amazing at that hurt. Passionate. I loved it. Yeah, yeah. And and this this whole assumption that child free women hate kids or are terrible with kids is so false. So it's it's bullshit. It's all fake. You know, it's media swirling up these lies to make people really, really hate child-free people because they just want women to keep having kids. Um, And, you know, that must have hurt so much. It still does. It still does. I have a neighbor who still screams at me, child. She screams at me, child hater. Child hater. No. Every time I see her in the drive, child hater. Yes. No. No. Yes. (laughs) Yeah, what is She's wrong told with the people? That I'm a, I mean, I have to live with a whack attack next door um, because yeah. she heard about my books, and you know, I'm I'm getting. It's funny how now, after all these years, suddenly I'm a diva. You know, it's like what? <laughs> but she heard about it, told the neighborhood about it. Um, I when Seriously? I walk down the street, I have people that turn it. 
I have people that turn their back on me. That's what I'm living with now. Oh my God! Why? Where does this? Where does this come from? Where does this hate for for women who don't want to have children? Where Where does it come from? I don't know. I think it's very threatening to some. I think they really think that we hate children. And by the way, there are people that do not like children. Would we want them to have children? I mean, <laughs> no. <what? laughs> no, exactly. Let's let people who want kids have them and those who don't want them not have them. It's quite simple. But let them be prepared. Yes. They're not prepared to have kids. There's not one course in any school that it says, are you parent material? This is what it's like to parent day to day, year to year. Not one course. You have to pass a course to work in the, in the uh, post office, drive a bus. <laughs> it's kind of crazy, right? I mean, to me, this is the most important job probably in the world. And yet we let anyone do it without any health guidance giving them any kind of support skills whatever um we just go it's like go for it we, it doesn't matter what you do just go for it um which is, it blows my mind it really does um you know so how was your family when they watched that 60 minutes how was the friends and family the people who knew you and loved you how did they react mixed um uh, my mother was very quiet my mother-in-law okay. that night wrote a poem a poem and the last was I think something about to whom will you leave all your worldly goods to the robbers the junkies or just the plain hoods but this is how our story ends our children though married are really just friends wow okay so not not so happy <laughs> and she cried she cried you have to understand Warren is a Jewish man I'm a Jewish woman and we have been taught mm -hmm. to replace the lost souls of the Holocaust. It's a shanda, a shame, if you do not bear a child, if you do not bring back a soul to this planet in the Jewish tradition. Uh, for them, it was horrible. My mom was very quiet. My mom has always been my, my um, she was my, the biggest supporter of my life. Yeah. She oh. had always wanted children. And she, I think she was disappointed. But she never said anything, you know, that was detrimental to me. Never. Luckily, my, my sister gave her two grandchildren, so that okay, helped. Okay, that's good. <laughs> yeah, that, so took the pressure off a little bit, yeah. But you, so I mean, obviously now in, you know, in my time here, I have much more choice to do this decision. And yes, we face backlash, absolutely. But I am so in awe of women like yourself who, you know, back then you lost your job because of this. 15 years. 15 years, no pension. 15. I mean, it's it's shocking that that's what you went through, but you were so strong in your reserve that this is important to you, which is incredible, you know? What, what is it about about it that is so important to you? Why Why is this so passionate for you, you know? Well, I think when you've been this affected by a choice and you know how yeah. unfair the perception is of you as a human being, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it becomes, well, I think for me, it becomes bigger than life. It was my passion, what I could wrap my heart and brains around. And when I wrote the first book, and that was 15 years, I was scared to do anything for a while. It was to reach one person. Oh, I... People have said, oh, she's just trying to make money. If I had written a book that said 50 shades of a 78-year-old in a sexual revolution, I'd be running to the bank. <laughs> this is not right. the kind of book where you go running to the bank. Trust me on right. that. Yeah. And the second book, I mean, those two books were thousands of dollars with editors and publishers and book designers and thousands. So it was just that for me, it was my passion, something that gave me a reason to be alive and yeah. reaching your heart, reaching other hearts, reaching the hearts of people who say to me, this has changed my life because I know what that yes. feels like from Ellen. Yes. Ellen changed my life. And even if it's not child freedom, if you can change the life of one person, oh, there's no, there's no gift greater than that. Nothing, nothing greater than that. Absolutely. Yeah. 
I mean, and and starting this project and receiving messages from women who say they finally fe- feel seen. There's something so incredible about, you know, being part of that community that basically society, you know, has ousted us and said we are abnormal and we are broken. And then, you know, being able to connect with women all over the world who feel like you do. And we know there's nothing wrong with us. There's nothing. We're not broken. No. We just... We have different we have different priorities. We have different preferences. There's nothing un- abnormal about us. We also have we have more time, and we have more time to do what we want to do. Many of us help yes. the planet. Many of us are involved with animals. Many of us have what I call daughter friends and son friends and people who have not had a connection to their parents, and we reach out to them. Yes. Many of us are, are terrific aunts or uncles or yeah. Uh, teachers or doctors or lawyers or just people who are gardening and creating beauty on this planet. You know, it, it's creating that that child is a phenomenal, phenomenal thing. But not creating a child and nurturing in another way. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? Here, here. <laughs> So do you then, do you regret doing the 60 minutes uh, interview or did it push you into this amazing direction where you thought, I'm going to do this? <laughs> I do not regret that experience. I There were no failures. There were only lessons. That lesson was profound because now if a reporter asks me a question and I know what that question is. And then I repeat it the way I want to hear, you know, have them hear it. And and I repeat what I just said the way I want them to hear it. And I repeat what I just said. Go try to edit that. You know, I know what I know what it is. I know what a, a broken record is in a response. So and it brought me to you. Look at that. It brought me to you, and you will reach thousands, thousands. Oh, you already have. I mean, I don't know what you're doing, but whoa, it's great. <laughs> it's <just> great. <laughs> well, I mean, this is this is something that I'm so passionate about because, you know, it's something I can do with, with my camera. I can do I can do this. And like you said, just being able to change even one person's life so that then they know that they are not alone, that it feels incredible. And it makes you want to keep doing it and doing it. And, you know, we need to find all of the women out there who are like us to show them that, you know, this is a completely valid way of living and we can live fulfilling lives. Yeah. We, I am not missing anything in my life through not having children. Um, and I would, I mean, I would love to know from yeah. you because regret is one of the biggest things that is pushed on, you know, on us. We'll regret this when we're older. Have you ever regretted not having children? No, but there were moments that I call pronatalistic bursts, uh, and I've been faulted for this, taken out of context. In my first book, I mentioned there were times when, when I was younger when I would visit one of my friends who just gave birth, and they were holding this little baby to their breast, and everybody was mm-hmm. ooing and eyeing, and it looked so sweet and so precious, <laughs> and I was like, oh, maybe, maybe, maybe. And then... I continued to write, and this was not taken, it was taken out of context, that was it. Oh, she's really wanted to have a child. No. See, she's such a fake and a liar. But what I say is, what happened before that moment? What will happen after that moment? Because that's what we call a hallmark or Kodak in the old days you know, of film moment. And those are the moments where I, I stopped for a second because of pronatalism, because of brainwashing. Yeah. But yes. now at 78, at 78, I think about dying and I think about my family tree withering. <laughs> you know, it looks <laughs> kind of sad, my lips. <laughs> it's hard in there with nothing. It's like, it's like this lost limb. But then I say to myself, wait a minute, I touched your heart. You're going to live yes. on with me. I, touched, Absolutely. I have four what I call daughter friends who are actively in our lives. One of them has a son. He calls me Marma, Marsha Grandma. And I talk to her every night when she's coming home from work. I speak to another woman at least twice a week. And I have one here. Those were my students who never disconnected. And I have a young lady here who moved from Costa Rica. Her mother threw her away. This young Mm. woman on her own has her own home, had an education, 
she, when the COVID hit, she brought the food to us because she lives here. I mean, wow. you can have those nurturing moments if that's what you miss. But yeah. in the second book, when I talked about cancer and how I faced death with cancer, and I was mm. sitting there with chemo, and I was looking around and, and trying to see who's there, who's there with all these people? And I wondered, there was somebody there with a, with a younger person. Mm. Was that their son or daughter? Maybe it was mm -hmm. a neighbor. I don't know. And then there were other people who had nobody. Maybe they had five kids and none of them could come. Maybe one had died. Maybe one lived in another country. Maybe one was estranged. Maybe one couldn't care less. I mean, there's so many. And I realized at that moment that that was not what I was missing. I Because I no. had the most wonderful nurses and doctors. And I had a husband and I had friends who made soup for me and took me to radiation and, and cared. No. And yeah. that's the thing that counts that yes. creating that circle of friendship that's everything absolutely absolutely we can leave a legacy we don't need to leave just a a genetic legacy right we can leave a legacy through so many other ways as a public figure in, you know in the child free world have you seen attitudes change towards child free women in general is it getting better is it getting worse what do you think I'm asked that question all the time, all the time. And the answer is yes and no. Right. Depending on where you live, if you're in a city, there's more chances that you'll be more accepted. If you're in a suburb, not a chance in hell. Because right. everything is home and hearth or church, which is, of course, they want more people. Or temples, yeah. they want more people. Or mosques, yeah. they want more people. Um, mm. So, it's, it, again, depending on where you live, depending on city, or suburb there are there's a small starting 46 years later of acceptance but still most people that get on your site or my site or instagram or facebook there are thousands maybe millions at this point yeah. that hunger to feel acknowledged, supported, yes. validated, that still may think, what's wrong with me? How come I don't have this instinct? You know, so yes and no. I Sadly, sadly, it's still no. Yeah, it's difficult, isn't it? I, I hope the younger generations are embracing this. I mean, we know the birth rates are dropping, so it's interesting. What will, you know, younger women, uh, what are they going to do? Can they even afford to have kids, you know? The, the world has changed so much, and I can't imagine um, how difficult it is to even raise a child, you know, right now. Um, but uh, the other question I have, look what's happening on this planet. Look what's happening with, with the pandemic and, and, and climate change and I, it's hard for me to wrap my brains around why would you put a child right now on this planet? Mm, yeah. or, or, you know, I, or more than one and have two and three and four. What? Yeah. It's, what? it's pretty, it's intense. Yeah. It is, um, it is an interesting qu question I ask as well. Yeah. I, I, I think people like to put their heads in the sand um, and not, you know, not ask too many questions. Just follow, follow what everyone else is doing. Life is easier that way. If you want to go against the grain, yeah, it's going to be more difficult. But I absolutely am happy to do that. I'd rather be true to myself and like you, and face that backlash and show people that there is nothing wrong with the decision that we've made. Um, and stay true to myself. So I hope that you know we can inspire other women to follow that and and be authentic to themselves. Yes. And I think one of the other things that's so important is they don't have to prove themselves. They don't have to have a career. They don't have to be, as you and I are, you know, um, trailblazers or they can just live their own lives. They can sleep late in the morning and read a book or go to their jobs and come home and take a bath, have a glass of wine, enjoy who they are. They don't have to be married. They don't have to, have to, have to. I don't want the child-free women to think that if they're not something or if they haven't accomplished something great, then they're less than. Yeah, They're not. They're just themselves. Mm. Not all of them have what you and I have, that, that, you know, that advocate, you know, need. And that's okay. 
and that's okay. And, and we're all not wealthy. That's the other. <laughs> Sadly, no. You know how many times I think, oh, you're just you're you're just hungry for money. Seriously, <laughs> I don't know if you can see my chair, but I need a new chair right now. The, it's the, the thing is coming apart. I mean, I'm not wealthy. And even if you were wealthy, I, I think it. Why is why is what you do not even um, a legitimate way to earn money if people support what you do? And ultimately, that's all that that's all that we um, we want to help people. And if someone wanted to support you by buying your book, which you put your time, effort, and and passion into writing, what's wrong with that? Nothing, you know. But people like to bring other people down. You're not you're not going to believe this. There is a movement within our movement. Yeah. I call them the purists who have attacked me on Reddit, attacked me as a review on my first book, Confessions of a Child-Free Woman, where they feel, because I was a dedicated teacher, because I was involved with children, because I still am heart-connected, because I once took the title of stepmother, I'm a sham, I'm a fake, I'm a phony. Oh, gosh. All I want is money from my book, money, money from my cruises, uh, which I'm telling you, the amount of money that I get doesn't come near what I do for those cruises. And that I'm to be abhorred, uh, reviled, and kept away from. I cannot begin to tell you the shock when I realized that. I literally almost passed out the first mm. time I heard somebody say that. And there's another site uh, that was not allowed to have me on it. I've been banned from certain sites. Me. I mean, it's like, what? Uh, I mean, what? so this is this is something that, I mean, when I when I started this project and I was looking at, you know, child-free, um, child-free, um, the movement in general, what I noticed is that, yes, it, there, there can be lots of negativity inside of the movement in general. And yes. purists, like you say, I don't, I don't understand this because ultimately, aren't we just here to empower women? Isn't that our goal is to empower women to live their lives? And if you have, if any child-free person has a stepchild, so what? We are trying to tell the world that we can still love a child. We can still be around children. We can still nurture. So what on earth is wrong with being a step parent? I have no idea. Um, so that is ridiculous. Whoever is doing that uh, needs to get a life. And the sad, the sad thing is it remains. It remains as a uh, review of my book. Oh. It remains with a, with a picture of that one paragraph where I talked about having a child at my breast, but negating what I wrote after that, that it was a pronatalistic brainwashed moment. That is, it's ridiculous because, no, because it's ridiculous because that, story. that moment in your book, I remember reading that thinking that is so true because I, my, I have a nephew and, you know, I love him. And when I saw my nephew with my sister and, I, and you have those seconds of, pure joy and love that you feel and you're yeah. like wow yeah and and yeah. at that moment you can have a pang of like that's amazing and I won't get that but I'll I and accept it is. that it is yeah yeah it is amazing so I and there's nothing wrong with feeling that because no no path is 100% right or wrong being child free or being a parent there there is no perfect path in life so we will miss some things we will gain other things parents have things and then there's other things they they'll never miss. experience right. exactly exactly so i right. really appreciated exactly. that part exactly. in your book um so i think ignore the haters marsha <laughs> ignore the haters <laughs> they obviously you know they just want to p bring you down um and they need to get a life <laughs> Any kind of hate is about the hater. It's not about yes. you. It's their choice of thoughts, their misperception. Uh, and in the second book, which is all about rejection, I write about that a lot because I had to live that to learn it. <laughs> I still have to learn it. <laughs> when she screams at me, child oh, hater. Oh my God. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's the thing. We 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 put ourselves out there. Sadly, there's going to be uh, people who don't want to hear what we have to say, and they will always be negative. Um, right. But you, you know, because we're passionate about this, it's important, and we have to just keep going, keep going. So I, yeah, I urge you to just ignore those assholes. <laughs> um, well, you know what really is 
um, pretty funny. I, I used to live in New York on Long Island. And yeah. when I did get back into teaching 15 years later, I had a master's degree in another field, teaching English as a second language. And because I remarried, don't judge me. I've been married three times. <laughs> I never, not from me. I'm not judging. Believe me, it, it was worth <laughs> it getting Jim. So it's okay. There you go. Um, there you go. <laughs> When I finally had my name changed, they didn't know who I was. I was immediately hired. I was nominated by my peers to Walt Disney's American Teacher Award in East Meadow by my peers. If I hated kids, I could never have that nomination. No, exactly, never. exactly. I didn't win, but it was so uplifting to me. 600 teachers of East Meadow. So what do you think it's going to take then, Marsha, for women to be able to make this decision without facing any backlash? More of you, more of me being seen, heard, experienced, more of the Facebook sites, the Instagram sites, uh, and the feeling of pride. Yeah. We need to be able to stand up with as much joy and say, we're not going to have a child and even have a shower for that. I mean, why not? They do baby showers. Why not having no kid shower? Which is kind <laughs> yes. of funny. What do you bring to it? But maybe condoms. I don't know. Actually, I sometimes bring condoms to baby showers and it's not taken very well. But oh, I, always this is... I know. Oh, God. That's but funny. the pride be able not the defense not the defense mm. not i call it the the, the push pull dance of dysfunction cha 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 you're gonna lose yeah and if they're at the point where the religious and they're going to say god's going to punish you you leave them alone yeah you will never win them over no but you got to win your over yourself you have to stand up and feel that joy that freedom that says i am me this is for me. It's not for you. That's okay. I like what you're doing. If you like what you're doing, but I'm not going to defend it. I'm not going to be afraid of it. I'm going to speak it with passion, like any parent seems to do. Here, here. <laughs> now, I wasn't like that at first. I was, a, I was a defiant fighter. It doesn't do any good. No. So you would try and justify your reasons and say, yes, I'm not that way. I'm not that way. Right. I'm not that way. I'm blah, 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 blah. I do this. I do. No, I don't need to do that. I don't need to do that. They don't need to do that. And yet when we say to them, well, why did you have kids? Well, I want. Well, if that's selfish, I want. You're calling me selfish? Well, I want. Well, that's selfish. <laughs> I used to do that all the time. Yeah. Ugh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, those, those words that people throw out at child-free women, selfish, I don't understand at all. I love that word. I want to be selfish in the, in the positive way. I want to take care of myself. You yes. cannot take care of me. I have to take care of me. Yeah. Now, you may deem that to be your selfish. That's your problem. You're choosing the wrong thought. I know who I am. I know what I do. I know what I feel. I know what my life is like. Don't categorize me. Yeah. But usually at this time of my life, I would tell people, if they start in, you just smile, you <laughs> giggle to yourself. You know what your lifestyle is like. You wish them well. You send them love and say, I'm done talking. I love have that. I love that. <laughs> Sometimes yeah. you have to leave people. Sometimes it's so toxic, so depleting of your joy. You have to cut that tie mm. and families are not necessarily forever. I, I mean, I write in my second book. I have no relationship with my niece and my nephew anymore. They have just no. thrown me away. Because and, of this? Yeah, it's a sad story. Partly with my, with one of them, partly because I'm a writer and I wrote a journal for both of them and I included things that my niece felt was not to be included. And okay. she took my nephew's journal, read it, and then just put, threw me under the bus. And, and there were things I should not have written. And I apologize for that because, mm, you know, I'm a yeah. writer and sometimes writers write too much. Um, I should have journaled it to myself. And I didn't. I didn't. And I only meant well, but it, it came out to be 
horrible. And then because I wrote this book and it, it affected my niece, um, who said to me, well, not everybody thinks the way you do, Aunt Marsha. And oh. uh, oh, I, when the first book came out, I said, why haven't you shared it with your friends? She says, well, what, do you think I believe the way you believe? And my friends mm. wouldn't want to read your book. And that started the whole thing again. So then my sister took their stance and I lost my sister for eight years. And wow. she's just starting to come back to me. But really? I lost eight years of a relationship with my baby sister. Yes. So you know what? Families are not forever. Families, no. you're born into a family. Sometimes it's not the right fit. And just letting go, but sending love in your heart, in your thoughts mm -hmm. to heal their heart, not yours. Yeah. Just standing to what you need. Embracing the family of friends, people you love as yours. That's a family. Yes. It, it does surprise me when I hear from the women that I interview that family members, you know, will tell them this is not right. You have to have a child. You have to do this. And I don't understand why anyone would have a child and then force them to live a life that they were not happy in. I just don't understand. Have you heard of women that are left out of wills because their brother or sister has kids? They don't. Really? What an insult. Gosh. Oh, God, yes. I want to... I, I interviewed a woman whose father said to her, you're not having any children? Well, let me tell you something. Your mother wanted to abort you, and I begged her not to, and now I wish she had. What? Oh, my gosh. I, I can't understand. I was in tears. There's a doctor in Nigeria. She, I mean, if she dare say that she's child-free by choice, she'd be considered a man. Nobody would go to her. There's a woman in Greece. She was called soulless, soulless. And children were kept away from her because they thought the children could be affected by her. You know, this is, this is who we're fighting for. You know, as a person living in a, a Western country, which it's relatively progressive, it's really conservative. So it has a long way to go. You know, we, we still don't have full autonomy over our bodies here. I know that when I was uh, wanting to get a hysterectomy for a health issue um, and I had a gynecologist tell me, no, we're not even going to talk about that. Um, so I know I'm facing those battles here in this country. So God only knows what women are having to deal with in other countries, uh, which are more religious, um, you know, and it's truly heartbreaking. Can women get sterilized in your country? So it really is going to depend on how old you are, um, you know, who is the doctor you're talking to. If you're in your early 20s, you're going to face a battle. I mean, even if you're in your uh, late 20s, early 30s, I've, I've had women tell me, doctor said, you're uh, too young. Come back when you're, you know, in your late 30s. And why is that? If we, if we believe women who say at 21 years old that they want a child, why can't we believe women who say they don't want a child at 21? Um, so here in Germany, it's possible, but it, it's still going to be um, a lot of work. Well, we have a young lady who will be talking on our cruise, um, Nicole. She's 24, she was 24 when she finally got sterilized, and she is now the person that people run to for help to find a doctor who will accept without a written consent from the husband. Have you heard of that? Yeah, oh my God. Um, I've also had a woman tell me that was their experience. And this is shocking. It's 2021. Why are doctors saying they need a husband's permission to perform these operations? It's probably the same issue that Ellen Peck had in so many ways. I mean, I, I'm sure she didn't even think about sterilization in 1974 as an option. Uh, but men can get vasectomies a heck of a lot faster. And it's much more simple. Oh, absolutely. Um, my husband had a vasectomy and his experience was, you know, the most easy, simple thing ever. He went to one doctor who asked him, do you want kids? No, he said. And then he had a date three weeks later for that operation. Um, so, you know, the double standard with how women and men are treated with this decision is um, infuriating. I've heard people say, well, how come you were born with two breasts and a uterus? 
and 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 I've said, well, I've also been born with two lungs, but I'm not an opera singer. I mean, hello, That's the way I am. And oh, and oh, how about the how about the women facing infertility? What they go through? Exactly. What they exactly. go through. Ah, uh, because they're less. They're yeah. less. Ellie, childless. Yeah. And then when they reach acceptance, they become child free. Right. It is. It's sad. It's just sad. But you know, like I said, you you help. You are going to help. I'm going to try. I'm going to try. You're doing it. If there's one woman that has heard something, they will go and tell somebody else, and that will continue. So, what do you tell the women out there, Marsha, who are? grappling with this decision maybe they're on the fence about whether they want to live a child-free life or not oh i have the answer (laughs) give it to me first write it i want you to write a journal every day of what you've been doing for about a week stupid stuff breakfast washing dishes going shopping going to work coming back sitting on the toilet not being interrupted, although if you have a dog, you may be. My dog sits and watches me. <laughs> um, taking a bath at night, watching the TV, reading a book, whatever it is, every stupid, wonderful little thing that you're alive, write it down for one week. Then, if possible, spend time with kids, not just babysitting, quality time. If you are an uh, an auntie or an uncle, bring that child into your home for more than a few days. Your your sister would love it. It's a break. Spend 24 <laughs> yes. hours a day. You'll get past that moment that you just shared when you went, oh, because yeah. you'll see the reality and mm. the time and the commitment and the needs. I want, I need, what are we doing? I'm bored. Where are we going? What can I do? Where, can I have my friends? Can I have pizza? I don't like that. I don't want to eat that. It's part of what children are. Yeah. Quality, not babysitting. Mm. Compare, contrast, decide. I love that. 24 hours a day. And for those who say, well, it's only 18 years and then I'll have all that freedom. Such nonsense. My mama worried about me till the day yeah. she died. Till the day she died. Yes. Um, you just don't not have kids in your life unless they are estranged from you. But they're in your life forever. Yeah. And their issues. And if they if they have children, the grandchildren. Oh, that's the other thing. The icing on the cake of life, grandchildren. That is such a myth that's beyond belief. Sometimes as a baby and maybe as a toddler, they love their Grammy. They love their Grampy. They stop growing up. They have lives of their own. My neighbor next door was sick with, um, what's that thing that you get where you have that rash all over you? Shingles. Yeah. She has two grown grandsons, two grown sons, not one, came to help them. We did their shopping. We brought them to the doctor. We got their medication next door to them. So I rest my case. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I mean, I really wish people could see the, the positive impact that child-free people have on this planet, in our communities. You know, just because we don't have kids, it doesn't mean we're not contributing to society. Um, and I, I really hope that people can start to see that our lives are just as valid as those who decide to have children. So I'd love to ask you one final question, Marsha. Um, we touched on regret earlier in our conversation. And, you know, regret is something, it's a topic that is uh, mentioned to child-free women a lot. We'll regret this decision when we're older. Um, and it's, you know, used a lot of the time to scare women, I think. Um, so as a 78-year-old woman who has lived her life the way that you wanted to live it, have you ever regretted the decision not to have children? No. Not one minute. Not one nanosecond. Not one half of a nanosecond. My life as it is now, as it's been in the past, as I see it in the future, I hope, is lovely. It's 
filled with what I want. It's filled with people I care about and who care about me. Um, I think it's important to wrap your heart around something that you wake up in the morning, especially as you get older. I do not sit and watch Let's Make a Deal on TV. I'm out as far as here. On Every morning I have Instagram. I have women. I have men writing to me. It took six years of my life to write the two books that I wrote. Um, and then I was a keynote at the Not Mom Summit. And I, I, then I'm in two documentaries, one of which you can see right now, To Kid or Not To Kid. Have yes. you seen that? Yes, I have. Incredible. Oh, my God. I've Incredible. Seen what she's done. And soon, my so-called selfish life, which we'll, we will screen on that note, on that child-free cruise. She, Teresa will be on board screening it. Amazing. So, um, no, not a second, not a minute, not even when I thought I was dying. Not even then, because it's a life worth living. It's a life uh, well lived. That's everything. When you come to that part of your life, when it's over, it, and that feeling of, it's been good. I've done what I want to do. I've been where I want to go. I've helped what I want to help. I've lived for what I need. That is the biggest joy of this thing called life. And if it's a child that you've had and you've given you love and you've enjoyed that, more power to you we're not against that no we're against defining us as less barren um unloving hedonistic um selfish godless bleh. <laughs> no no regrets we are child free is hosted by me zoe noble and produced by james glazebrook if you liked this episode, please leave a five-star review on Apple Podcasts, as this really helps other people find us. Head to wearechildfree.com to read more stories from incredible child-free women and find out how to share your story with me. Speak soon, lovelies.